Welcome to 13. Let's go. Why are the delivery apps failing? Okay. This week on the streets um, daily bar chart, let's discuss DoorDash first. Uh, DoorDash showed a peak in April. However, it has shown a dramatic spike down, not the incremental ones like we're used to, but very dramatic. And then throughout May, prices fell very quickly on um, on heavy trading as well. So when it's sometimes when it's lower trading, it's harder to monitor those numbers. But when it's heavy trading, um, so the volume's really high, up and down, hedge funds, whatever. Throughout the day, the the volume keeps going up and up and up. Um, sometimes little indicators are in there, but this one was a big one, and it fell extremely hard in May and. What that signaled was to all traders to act quickly and sell. And it's not, it's not in a, you know, we always see sell, buy, sell, buy. The articles can change week to week. Right now, they're all kind of in the same space, which is going to lead us down a road here today. So bear with me because you're going to want to hear all this. Uh, DoorDash, Just Eat, Delivery Hero, and Deliveroo are under, are under pressure as their growth slows and starts to pile up. So in the US and Europe, um, since those companies that I just mentioned, now again, DoorDash, Just Eat, Delivery, Delivery Hero, and Deliveroo in the United States and Europe have lost a combined amount of $20 billion, $20 billion plus since, since going public. So um, this is due to the consumer um, the consumers want for these products isn't as high, but also the consumers want for the new pay rates or the new, the new cost of getting these services, they don't want it anymore. And that's what everybody's seeing. That's why the investors are getting out. Um, this is why you're seeing DoorDash and others like hurrying to, um, to get into food space harder and to get into makeup or whatever, because, and we'll come around to that. So you guys got to bear with me here. Um, but there's a, the biggest competitor of all is now on the loose. It's not, it's not a, it's not a looming factor anymore. It's now, it's now in the game. Um, so consumers, consumers want for this is down. Consumers want for this stacked against the new rate and cost of what, of what these services are makes it extremely low and falling by the day. Um, so <clears throat> this group of delivery startups that I just mentioned, obviously during the pandemic, that was the height of how good they're going to do. That was, that was their, you know, a year into the pandemic, that was their, that was their peak. I mean, for people to think they'd keep growing, growing, growing after that, they only would have had the pandemic continued, but we started seeing it taper off and we thought, okay. You know, it's just going to taper off. But I mean, we've seen extreme drops now. And of course, of course there's other factors in, in play right now. The economy, um, inflation, uh, pay rates. Uh, but all of this, it, it, in the end, it doesn't matter. The want for the service is down. And they're now fighting for grocery space. And we see it as they fight for SNAP benefits. Now all of them are fighting for SNAP benefits. Um, well, who's going to deliver those SNAP benefits? Because as far as I can tell... It's going to be delivered by gig workers at an extremely low rate. Those are just going to be the low rate cards that we always make fun of now, a $3 offer or something. You're not going to, and it's no, it's no, it's not a bad on the, on the person using the SNAP benefits. It's a bad on the company for not offering a better rate when you're taking a SNAP benefit, because clearly I don't even know if you can tip through, I don't think you can tip through SNAP benefits. Maybe you can. Um, I don't know. Um, but now they're facing, uh, these, these apps are facing, facing, uh, the fact of their investors want to see profit bottom line, dude, that's look, any, any company in the game, we all know this, there needs to be profit. There needs to be a profit. And not only is, is it a struggle for all of these companies to find a profit, but even now trying to show investors the pathway to the profit isn't, isn't really working with them because the investors are seeing through this and they're like, well, wait a minute, 
what you've told us this plan before. We've seen this schematic. You've picked up this, you've dropped this, you no longer do this, you're offering this, but in the end, nothing works. You can't make a profit. And $20 billion for four companies combined in the US and Europe, that's 20 billion, that's a lot of money, you guys, for for food for food apps. Um, and that's how much they're down. So, um, but now we're also facing the reality of high inflation and an extreme, extremely quickly falling demand, which is now proven by every study out there. Uh, another huge concern is they're under scrutiny from um, regulatory uh, regulations and um, and labor groups and workers' rights groups and everything all over the country. Things we've been talking about here on this channel forever because no matter what you think of this stuff, no matter if you think it's coming to your state, if you're in a red state, a blue state, and you've those who email me and everything about this stuff, like I'm in a red state, I'm going to be okay. I've always said that in some way or another, you're going to pay for the other states that want regulations though. So if only 15 state, states want regulations and DoorDash, let's say, is in 50, well, that just means 15 out of 50 is going to be spread against the 50. They're not going to just take it out on those states. Um, but these that's another huge concern for investors. So we're not even going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm just going to tell you, investors are very well aware of this. They're very well aware of the fact that, you know, do, are these strikes high numbers? No. I mean, do I, have I ever believed in these online strikes? No. But um, it's they're being noticed, not just the strikes, but all the news articles and everything that no longer can hide it. The pay rate for drivers is just so down that people need to know. Um, and this has investors wanting out and to not be involved with these companies any longer. So for years, investors have fed these companies with copious amounts of cash, betting that cheap deliveries would all would eventually lead to some profits. Um, but as interest rates grew and even extremely safe assets, um, such as like even like long-term, short-term bonds, they now have a better return than trying to play with these companies. And that's like, you know, long-term bonds. Nobody really does that for investing, but the investing with a long-term bond is going to make you more than playing around with these companies. So unless you're a day trader, it just doesn't make sense anymore. So people want out um, and they don't, again, they don't see the path. I don't know that I for sure see the path for, for just food delivery um, because it's not going to ever come back. And the fact is they're going to have to price things higher and, you know, um, but the pandemic era is, uh, you know, all these companies are starting to feel that post pandemic era, you know, and. And that will likely require paying drivers less and raising customers' prices even more. We know this. It's already happening, and the volume's going down because of it. But if they keep doing this, this is what Uber and Lyft did for those that weren't around during the 2015, 16, 17 era. Or, I'm sorry, 17, 18, 17, 18 era. Um, that's what they did is just race to the bottom so quickly that um, they had to charge everybody more and the, and and they were paying drivers less, even than we ever thought it could be. Uh, so as growth in the food delivery industry slows, companies have two choices, merge or stick to, to markets they can dominate, which makes sense. So if in one market, you know, let's say that lit, I'm going to keep it in ride shifts, so it's not so DoorDash, but it's DoorDash that we're talking about here. But, you know, if or either, if in one market, Lyft does very well or DoorDash does very well. Maybe they need to focus on that one. If in this market they're losing to Uber Eats, maybe they just kind of give up. And it's not just DoorDash. It would be Uber Eats too. Pick your markets and fight for the ones you want to fight for. Um, I mean, that's kind of what it's coming down to or merge, which we're seeing everywhere. Um, Instacart is already starting to have talks with Uber Eats. We knew about the fact that they're going to offer Uber Eats through the Instacart app. However, Uber is actually making moves to potentially acquire Instacart. So that's a whole nother game. And um, after the fall of WeWork, which was the poster child for growth at all costs type model, you know, um, startup ma mentality has been changing. And it's one thing to talk about the profits you're going to make and the path to it, but it's a whole nother game to show it to the investors. And we're at the show me part and they can't do it. They can't do it. Um, 
Enter Amazon. So now it's for real. It's it's now a service you can buy. Um, more than 200 million Amazon Prime members. That buries the database of DoorDash, Uber, Instacart. All of them added up. Don't equip. Don't make the equivalent of Amazon. Amazon is a bigger database than all of them combined. <coughs> For a Prime membership, you now pay $130 per year um, for free, fast shipping and returns, uh, savings at Whole Foods, and assorted other perks that justify the cost. Well, it just it just launched that Amazon now can deliver food for $9.99 a month or $99.99 a year. And for that, anytime you ever feel like getting groceries, not just from Whole Foods, but any any grocery store, you as long as it's over $35, you will get in-store prices, you will have it delivered within two hours, and um, uh, there, oh, there's, there will be no extra fees on it. There's all these service fees and everything are going to be taken off. So... I know the other platforms use 35 too. So if you're going to order $35 worth of groceries on Instacart, you're going to get about half of the groceries that you'll get if you order it through Amazon on a Kroger to Kroger type offer. Um, so, uh, so it said that also it now Amazon is also going after the food delivery space. We've know they paired up with Grubhub plus for a while. However, now you do now no longer have to pay for Grubhub plus. If you want that, guess what? You can just go to amazon.com backslash Grubhub. And if you have a Prime account, you can activate a year's worth of service for free, which which they're calling $120 savings, um, which is the annual cost of Grubhub Plus subscription. But you get it a year for free. $0 delivery fees on orders of $12 or more, um, lower service fees, and $5 credit back on pickup orders. They're going after everything now. Amazon is now going after everything, all of the food delivery, all of the grocery delivery. Guess what, guys? They did it to books. They did it to bikes. They did it to everything in between, including selling cars. What's to stop them from doing this? And that's 13 minutes of gig news in just under 13 minutes. Peace, y'all.